Yeah, so I'll do a quick video about how a Stirling engine works. We've talked about this on the website, or at least we sort of wrote about it on the website, but we've never really done a video about it. So we've got here one of our LTD engines, which is low temperature differential engines, which basically means it can work on a low temperature difference between the, the top and bottom plates. Now this engine can work from the heat of your hand, um, or it can also work from uh, a cup of coffee. It can even run from ice cubes as well. But um, let's give a, an example where it's being heated from below with a cup of coffee. So underneath on the bottom plate, you've got it's being heated. On the top plate, it acts as a heat sink, so the cold side. So you've got a hot and cold side. And there's two components with this engine which are sort of critical. Um, once you've got the understanding of those two, everything else falls into place. You've got a displacer piston and you've also got a power piston. The displacer piston is the blue foam, large sort of blue foam in between the engine. You can see when the engine's running, it goes up and down. The power piston is the, the black smaller piston. So let's start with there at the top. So the, the displacer is actually at the bottom. Okay. Um, the air is cool, it's sat at the top on the, on, the, on the top plate. What happens is the displacer moves up and it basically displaces the air and pushes it to the bottom. The act of it going down to the bottom and circulating the bottom means that it heats up. Heating it up means that it expands, it's got a little bit of pressure and that little bit of pressure then causes the power piston to go up. It has to, the power, it's got pressure behind the actual power piston. The power piston is connected to the flywheel, as is the displacer. They're actually at a 90 degree offset, so it, you see it actually happens, the power piston moves a little bit later. So we've got, if we do that again, start at the bottom, the displacer goes up, and then the power piston goes up afterwards. So now we've got the displacer at the top, and the power, the power piston has moved up. The flywheel continues to drive the motion around. What happens is the displacer then starts to come down. So now we've got the, the air which is at the bottom and gets pushed up to the, the top and it cools. The act of it cooling contracts and we see the piston now is going down. So you actually have a vacuum that's drawn it down. And that's, that's basically how it works. You have this cycle going around where the air inside is expanding and contracting. And when it's expanding, it's pushing the power piston up. When it's contracting, it's actually pulling it down. You can actually, if you drill a hole into the engine, put a sensor on you can actually see a small amount of vacuum and a small amount of pressure. The pressure is tiny, it's a fraction of a, a, a PSI, pounds per square inch, it's just absolutely tiny, but it's enough to operate the engine. And the flywheel um, basically just pushes it round to the next stage, to the next, the next part of the cycle. So that's how a Stirling engine works. And the principle is the same for all Stirling engines, it's just you have slightly different types of Stirling engines that work in slightly different ways. Now one thing that confuses people is when we talk about a piston, um, we can see we've got, we've got uh, this is the power piston. I should just bring it up to the camera. See the power piston there. So if I turn that upside down, if I put it on there, let's see if we can just do that. There we go, right, so that, I've got my finger over it. You can see that it's airtight. If I let go, it will fall and it will just come out like that. So it's airtight. There's no gap between there. In fact, the, the gap between the, the glass and the graphite is only a few microns. When we talk about a displacer piston, it's a bit confusing. Because when you imagine a, a piston, particularly in sort of car engines, it's a tight fit. It seals into the actual cylinder. Um, you imagine no air gap. With a displacer piston, when we talk about that with sterling engines, you can see there's a huge gap. That can pop around. And that is because it needs to be, it's, it's not airtight. So um, that huge gap basically is the gap where the air flows around. So when it's going between the top and the bottom, it's flowing past the outside. So it's only being held in the centre. Um, it's not touching the outside of the cylinder. And that's one thing that I think confuses a lot of people. So you've got the two pistons. Once you get to grips with that, I think the rest of the engine just sort of falls into place and it's all about bearings and cranks. So that's essentially how all steel and engines work.